Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Malaysia continues to work out the diplomatic, technical and logistical challenges involved in the search for NH370. We are still awaiting information from the Australian search and rescue operation as to whether the objects shown in the satellite images released by Australia yesterday are indeed related to NH370. NH in the meantime, we are continuing search and rescue operations in the rest of the southern and northern corridors. <coughs> I'll now give you a brief operational update, as usual. Search efforts southwest of Perth continues, and the Austro Australian authorities are intensifying their efforts in the area. HMAS success is due to reach the vicinity of the objects tomorrow. China has deployed five ships and three ship bond helicopters, which are currently heading towards the southern corridor. Three Chinese aircraft, two Illusion 1 IL-76s, and one Shangzi Y-8 arrived in Malaysia at 1100 this morning. They will also be searching in the southern corridor. Japan is deploying its assets to Perth, including two P-3 Orions, to assist with the Australian search efforts. This morning, I've spoken with the Acting High Commissioner from the United Kingdom, <coughs> who confirmed that the Prime Minister has spoken to the Prime Minister of the UK, and the HMS ECHO is already heading towards the Southern Indian Ocean to support the search effort. He also confirmed that the UK will be providing us with a list of possible assets can, that can be deployed if needed. He also confirmed, reaffirmed that in addition to the technical support provided so far, it stands ready to provide further specialist search and investigative assistance once more information about the fate of MH370 becomes known. I have also been in touch with the French delegation, which is led by the French ambassador to Malaysia and includes the men who led the investigation into Air France 447 crash. They have agreed to assist us with the considerable with the ex considerable experience and expertise. I will also be speaking to the U.S. Secretary of Defense at 21:15 tonight to request further specialist assets to help with the search and rescue efforts, including remotely operated vehicles for deep ocean salvage. The Kazakhstan authorities have assured us that they have not found any trace of MH370, and we are awaiting permission for Kazakhstan to be used as a staging point for search operations. On the police investigation, the Ukraine police have confirmed that the background checks on the Ukrainian passengers have come back clear. I would like to briefly discuss the processing of the Imasat data. The investigations team received the complete raw Imaset satellite data, which included the six handshakes at approximately 1500 on Wednesday, 12th of March. This type of data is not normally used in investigation of this sort. It is only because we have so little other information to go on in this difficult and unprecedented situation that the data is being used. Upon receiving the raw data, the Malaysian authorities immediately discussed with the U.S. team how this information might be used. The U.S. team and the investigations team then sent the data to the U.S. where further processing was needed before it could be used. Initial results were received on Thursday the 13th of March at approximately 13.30, but it was agreed by the U.S. team and the investigations team that further refinement was needed, so the data was again sent back to the U.S. The results were received at approximately 2.30 on Friday the 14th of March and presented to the investigations team at a high-level meeting at 2100 on Friday. The UK AAIB, who had also been processing this data independently, presented their results which concurred with ours and those of the US team at that meeting. The Prime Minister was briefed on the satellite information at 8 a.m. Saturday the 15th of March and publicly announced it at the press conference at Saturday lunchtime. Search and rescue operations were immediately shifted to the northern 
and southern corridors. Last night in Kuala Lumpur, we held a briefing for the relatives of those on board MH370. As I mentioned in yesterday's statement, the briefing was to update family members on the latest developments and to answer questions and clear up any confusion. The meeting was well attended by family members from different nations, including Malaysia, and by representatives from the Chinese Embassy in Kuala Lumpur. A high-level Malaysian delegation, including representatives from Malaysian Airlines, the Department of Civil Aviation, the Ministry of Transport, the Ministry of Defense, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and the National Security Council also attended the meeting. We had a very constructive and frank discussion. Although we answered most of the questions they raised, we could not answer them all. These briefings will continue and the family's convenience at the family's convenience for as long as the families want them. The briefing brought the families and the Malaysian authorities closer together, not just in terms of sharing information, but also in terms of listening to the voice of the family members. The Prime Minister's special envoy to China will be coordinating the briefings in Kuala Lumpur from now on. The high-level team I announced yesterday arrived in Beijing last night. Today, they met with family members for three and a half hours. Ladies and gentlemen, this continues to be a multinational effort coordinated by Malaysia and involving dozens of countries from around the world. We continue to receive offers of assistance, including specialist assets that can help with the search and rescue. And we welcome all assistance as we continue to follow every credible lead. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the floor is now open for question and answer session. We will start, we'll start with the local media first. Please, sir. Kita sedang buat persiapan untuk kedua-dua kemungkinan tadi dan dari segi persiapan dengan keluarga kita sedia maklum uh, dan kita dapat sekiranya maklumat yang kita terima daripada pihak-pihak yang berkenaan dapat disampaikan kepada mereka uh, secepat mungkin dalam kedua-dua perkara ini tapi malangnya setakat hari ini takat pukul 5.40 tidak ada perkembangan pengaman yang positif yang untuk kita sampaikan kepada mereka Yes, please. Sebut tak semangat untuk jawab. Oh, saya sudah dilihat. Um, laporan itu tidak benar seperti kenyataan saya tadi dah beberapa kapal telah pun uh, bertolak uh, dan ke arah uh, koridor selatan tadi. Yes. Yes. Saya korang peseri, saya Hilman dari Gunaman TV. Soalan uh, saya, sekiranya pertunjuk di Australia ini bukan jawapan kepada penemuan MH370 uh, Adakah terdapat pertunjuk baru yang mungkin pihak Dr. Sri terima uh, Dan soalan kedua saya, berapa lama SAR ini akan uh, uh, dijalankan Adakah uh, selepas signal uh, kotak hitam yang bertahan 30 hari Saya dimaklumkan bertahan 30 hari itu Pasal adakah ia akan ditamakan tidak, sebenarnya kita akan teruskan dan masih lagi bersemangat untuk um, operasi mencari dan uh, insya Allah untuk berlamat dan apa maklumat yang saya terima daripada pasukan Perancis di mana kapal terbang uh, Perancis uh, mengambil masa 2 tahun untuk kita cari uh, dan uh, dapat balik kotak hitam itu ada teknologi-teknologi yang lain yang digunakan 
uh, selepas 30 hari tempoh yang telah pun ditetapkan Yes, this is your Selamat datang Dato' Sri Saya kali daripada RTM Saya ada dua soalan kepada Dato' Sri Soalan pertama Apakah masalah yang bakal atau dihadapi oleh SARTI kita yang menjalankan misi di kudula koridor khususnya di koridor selatan yang melibatkan kawasan pencarian yang luas dan seperti yang kita tahu penemuan dua objek yang terbaru ni uh, yang dipergi sertihan daripada MH330 ni sedikit sebanyak menimbulkan persoalan mengatakan objek tersebut dia, uh, telah dijumpai memanakan gambar pada imej serai tersebut bertarikh pada 16 Mac lepas dan satu lagi seperti yang kita tahu Uh, bekalan bateri bagi menghantar isyarat uh, lokasi kotak hitam pesawat hanya boleh bertahan sehingga 30 hari dan bagaimana kita hendak mencari kotak hitam tersebut selepas tempoh tersebut memandangkan setakat ini kita tidak mempunyai sebarang teknologi yang membolehkan kita buat demikian dan justru apakah uh, langkah-langkah terusnya yang membolehkan kita untuk menemui kotak hitam tersebut Soalan kedua saya dah jawab tadi di mana kepakaran daripada pasukan Perancis di mana kapal terbang yang terlibat dalam insiden atau dahulu juga dijumpai selepas 30 hari dan itu sedang kita bincangkan apa keperluan kita tapi saya berdoa agar kita dapat mengenal pasti dan dapat mencari pesawat berkenaan sebelum tempoh berkenaan Berkait dengan cabaran untuk kita mencari um, pesawat ini Memang saya dah nyatakan sebelum ini uh, cabaran di koridor selatan Merupakan salah satu uh, cabaran yang uh, perlu uh, kita memberikan fokus yang teramat sangat Dan maklumat yang kita terima daripada pihak Australia Yang mengetuai um, operasi mencari di kawasan itu Itu merupakan uh, satu uh, perkara yang ada di yang kredibel saya sebut semalam itu mesti dijadikan tumpuan kita hari ini kalau itu dapat kita pastikan maka kawasan yang begitu luas dapat kita perkecilkan dan kita lihat kepada usaha-usaha lain yang perlu diberi fokus this is going to be a long haul I think we have to trench down on this but like I said the focus has always been to find the, the, the airplane and the, the focus is to reduce the area of search and possible rescue. Uh, this is it. I'm Amiro from BFM Radio, is name from Line. Uh, my question is, you mentioned there's a need for bigger located hydro foods. Can you elaborate further on this item and how we can help in the search? That has got a direct... I have to be very careful here uh, not to alarm the family members, but the Pinga locator hydrophones uh, relates to us locating the black box. And that was used by the French team. Very limited countries have got that capability. And uh, I have been talking to leaders of those countries for the possibility of using or being given um, the chance or the opportunity to use them. Please. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, Helmi dari Cosmo, is it? Yes. Uh, saya dengan uh, uh, yang didapati di barat daya tersebut, bila tarikh yang didapati. Uh, dan juga memandangkan ini adalah very credible uh, uh, Mungkin ada tak maklumat-maklumat radar di kawasan lautan ini telah didapati berkenaan dengan objek yang ditemui tersebut dan satu lagi persoalan ya, kepada uh, masa ataupun isi adakah pesawat point kita dilengkapi dengan sistem yang dipanggil sebagai point interruptible autopilot yang boleh menghalang sebarang tindakan hijack dari dalam secara manual melainkan kalau benda ini berlaku hanya boleh dilakukan secara remote control oleh militeri Sebelum saya serah kepada Dato' Azhar Kepada kaca mata saya Sebagai seorang yang tidak dilatih It looks as though the images are just a speck in the ocean But uh, I suppose there are experts out there Who can differentiate one speck on the ocean from the others I'm talking as a, as a layman 
Kalau kita diberitahu secara rasmi oleh pihak Australia yang mereka dalam dalam uh, imaging satellite yang yang mereka dapati ada ada mengalami perkara uh, atau objek yang 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 terlibat leak datangnya daripada pesawat tersebut dan uh, mereka terus menghantar uh, kapal lepas terbang P3 Orion untuk melihat uh, untuk mencari objek tersebut dan sehingga hari ini kita dapat uh, dengan positif mencari uh, objek tersebut dan uh, mestilah ada uh, analisisnya sebelum sebelum mereka mengumumkan bahawa objek tersebut is a credible saya nak mengesahkan daripada kenyataan saya tadi bahawa empat pesawat telah pun kita uh, deploy kepada 2,500 km daripada Perth dan pesawat-pesawat ini merupakan pesawat yang paling sophisticated dan itulah yang kita gunakan tak termasuk maklumat-maklumat uh, lain berkait dengan the P8 Poseidon and also the merchant ship that has responded to the shipping broadcast issued by us. RCC Australia on Monday. Untuk soalan yang kedua, saya rasa. Soalan kedua mengenai apa? Autopilot dengan apa? Poin anti-tactual apa? The aircraft is equipped as standard. Okay, there's nothing additional that we have in the aircraft. Yang belakang kan? Yes, yes. Thank you. Tadi saya dah maklumkan berbukaan dengan status di Kazakhstan, di mana Kazakhstan telah menyesahkan setakat ini mereka tidak mempunyai apa-apa maklumat bahawa pesawat berkenaan telah mendarat di sana. Tetapi kita masih menunggu maklumat sama ada kita uh, Kazakhstan dibenarkan sebagai staging point ayat yang digunakan tadi. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. There's not much been said about uh, the status of police investigation into uh, the pilot and the co-pilot the past few days in Australia. Yeah, so I can confirm that uh, my discussions with some of the intelligence agencies, international um, intelligence agencies have come back to me that they have not found anything unusual from the manifest. They have looked at the passenger manifest earlier Uh, but we have requested that they re-look uh, at the list. And uh, this is my own personal uh, information that I received from the intelligence agencies. Um, as far as the simulator is concerned, we have uh, forwarded um, the information uh, in there uh, to international uh, parties to verify and within, I believe, in a very short period of time, the IGP might be able to come to you to inform you of the latest development on that. Thank you. Uh, last question from local media. Your extreme leprosy. Good evening, Professor. Uh, Alini has claimed that she saw something like what could be an FH370 while flying back from Mecca. She lost two police reports and apparently nothing was done about it. Is that so? I don't have information about that particular sighting, but uh, we have always said that any lead, uh, where possible, we, uh, we will follow up. But at the moment, the most credible lead we have is from the satellite images. Obviously, all our efforts in the last two days have been to verify and corroborate that information. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we go to the international circuit itself, and this colonel will start to the gentleman here. Um, City Morning Herald. Are there any strong leads at all? Anything at all? Anything significant? What, 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 is there any idea what happened? No. <laughs> Please, behind the gentleman here. Yeah? No, don't you, don't you, don't you. No, the panel. Yeah. Angus Whitney from Bloomberg News. Minister, what conclusions have you drawn from the Inrosat data that you received? 
and also under analysis of the cockpit voice transmissions and the crew and the passengers and the, and the in, um, simulator, the flight simulator. Are there any conclusions either way that you've drawn, or any evidence of struggle, or anyone speaking on the duress? Your first question on Imaset, with the Imaset uh, information uh, we received on Wednesday, the, 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 the 13th of, uh, sorry, uh, yes, we received the uh, 13th of March on Wednesday. Uh, we collaborated with our investigating uh, team from the US team, and uh, in the end of the day, uh, we, the, we, we analyzed it and come up with the two corridors, the northern corridors, and Southern corridors, and uh, from from the what we had gathered from the uh, communication with the uh, pilot, uh, ATC and pilot, we have not come to any conclusion because we have we have to we have to get more information from the aircraft itself. I want to go. I'm very sensitive now to the to the next of kin, but we have we have to get. The more evidence if we get uh, the aircraft. That's what our main aim now is to find the aircraft. Yes, please. Your question, please. I'm the South China Morning Post newspaper. And how much smaller are the chances of finding the wreckage in that spot off the west coast of Australia as every day goes past, given the fact that the currents in that region and the fact that the wreckage might have sunk? And when you talk about the IMASAT data, what do you mean by uh, it needed further refinement in Let me just answer about the search. Uh, the Southern Corridor has always been a, a challenge. And I have to thank uh, the uh, Australian authorities um, and also uh, expertise uh, from the US. And like I said, um, I will be seeking further assistance uh, from the Secretary of Defense, uh, US, uh, tonight. Um, in the event uh, that we do not find uh, the debris in the near future, we have to, I will reveal and inform the media what are our, our plans in the Southern Corridor. But let me just stress that the most sophisticated planes, aircraft, and vessels are heading in that direction. Some have actually even covered the area. You're talking about the P-3 Orions. You're talking about the P-8 Poseidon. There are only two in this world. Um, and, and U.S. has given us uh, uh, permission and, uh, and have deployed that in that area. So, yes, uh, it is a challenge, but we are using every possible uh, asset and equipment that is available to the world out there uh, to locate the aircraft. Uh, upon receiving the raw data, the Malaysian authorities immediately discussed this with the U.S. team, how this information can be used. So the U.S. team and the investigation team of Malaysia, they sent the data to the U.S. where further processing was needed before it could be used. So the initial result came back to us on Thursday, 30 March, at 1.30 in the afternoon, and it was agreed by the U.S. team and the Malaysian team that further refi refinement uh, need to be done so that the, the data again was sent to, to the U.S. What does that mean? It, it doesn't mean much, but what did it show you when you received it? I don't want to go to details about it, but the end, of the, 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 the end details about it, uh, we come up with the two uh, corridors, uh, the northern corridor and southern corridor. Ima, it, the IMASET also, uh, IMASET data also was used by the Aircraft Accident Investigation Board of UK, and they also did, did analysis on it, on it. When AIB came to, came to Malaysia on, Saturday, um, on Friday, uh, the 14th of March, we compare the U.S. team effort, Malaysian team effort, with the ARB, and we, the, the, the end result of the analysis match each other. Okay, we go to the next question. After this, yes. Mike, could you someone pass the mic over, please? Thank you very much. Your question, please. Hello, gentlemen. You might want to Lithium-ion batteries that were in the cargo hold. Is that true? And given that they are notoriously unstable, 
The cargo manifest, this is obviously with the investigation team. Uh, we, we carry uh, some lithium ion uh, small batteries, they're not big batteries, but they are basically approved uh, under the ICAO, um, what you call, uh, how we basically, uh, under dangerous goods, it's not dangerous good per se, yeah. but in terms of the, they're not declared as dangerous good under ICAO, so it's being packed or uh, you know, in in, um, in in as as you know as recommended by RKO. So we we do check them, uh, check them several times, make sure the packing is right, and they are they are done in accordance to the RKO uh, guidelines. So uh, airlines do this all the time. It's not just Malaysia Airlines. Uh, you know, this this uh, goods are being flown by many airline cargo anyway. Um, that's according to the RKO ruling. It's with the investigation uh, team. We can check with that. Okay, we can check with that. Okay, we have a question from the gentleman on the piece. Could someone pass the mic over to you, please? Thank you. Yes, please, your question. From sir? Yes, in front of the CBS radio. Types. You talked about the long haul, which there's lots of things that we Long you also talked about having frank discussions with the family uh, members. Excuse me, sir, could you speak a bit lower, okay. please, sir? Yeah, sorry about that. You talked about the long haul, how uh, suggesting that this is going to be a very long ordeal, which you had suggested before. You also talked about having frank discussions with the family members. Now, I don't expect anyone to tell family members to give a person who would never do that. Yeah. But at the same time, when you have frank discussions, do you present realistic odds, realistic scenarios to the family members which obviously they may not want to hear and how difficult is it for you to be frank with family members about the chances of their loved ones being alive today it's it's very very difficult because the one question that they really want to know is the answer to which we do not have which is where are their loved ones and where is the aeroplane identify yourself please sir thank you my name is your from now uh, I have a question regarding the, uh, the person who said the uh, all, all right, good night. On uh, Monday conference, press conference, he said the initial investigation indicated it was the cold pilot. So my question is now, who do you think it was? Well, the, this is obviously this part of the investigation. Um, like I said, this is just the initial, uh, when we listen to the initial recording, uh, we suspect it was the, the co-pilot making the last call. So you're okay. not able to recognize the voice from the 53 years old guy between, you know, I think we've gone, I, mean, I think it's with the investigation team, so let them actually investigate that fully. Okay, we'll proceed to the next question. Madam, behind you please. Thank you. Um, yesterday, you, I'm from China News Service. Right. Yesterday, you mentioned Malaysia is lack of equipment or technology of the deep water researching. And uh, are you going to require more countries to use it, such as the uh, China, China's No Dragon one? Yes, is that useful? Yes, uh, China is fully aware of our requirements, uh, both at the moment and the possibility of deep sea search and, and rescue. Um, the idea uh, of ping uh, locator is, is one uh, asset uh, which is immediately required uh, to identify where the black box is within the 30 day period. But to do that, we need to um, narrow the areas of search. So we are focusing on the credible information um, that was in, given to us by the Australians who are leading that quadrant. And if we can narrow that, then we'll be, be in a better and a stronger position to know what sort of equipment um, that we need. But I can assure you that the Chinese authorities are more than willing uh, and have been very cooperative. So you are not doing this right now, right? No, I cannot. Okay. Your question, sir. Uh, Dimitri Sanders, Popular Financial Times. One of the difficulties with the search is that the planes can only spend two hours. Sorry, back here. One, one of the difficulties with the search 
is that the planes can only spend two hours in the region when they get there. Why has the Pentagon not sent refueling tankers so that the planes can spend longer time in the area? And are you going to ask uh, Defence Secretary Chuck Cable to do that when you talk to him tonight? After your question, I probably will. <laughs> But has that been discussed so far? Because it no, seems like a... I don't, that, the, the operational side of it, I do not discuss uh, at the level of uh, Secretary Chuck Hagel. But uh, now that you've raised it, I'll probably raise it with him tonight. Okay, we go to the next question. Um, the gentleman. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Right, sir. Hi, uh, Jane. Um, can you give some more details about uh, basically in Kazakhstan? Can you give us an idea of what will be based there, what capabilities they will have? Um, and does that mean that you're shifting focus in some ways on Northern Korea? Sorry, I couldn't find you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kazakhstan, did you say? Kazakhstan. What, what you're saying is uh, you talked about Kazakhstan in your, the, in your yeah. statement. Uh, does it mean that you're, in a sense, returning uh, your uh, focus and attention to the Northern Corridor? Yeah. No, that just shows that we are concentrating on both corridors. Um, and in relation to Kazakhstan, they have said that uh, they have no news uh, uh, or confirmation that uh, the, the airplane was in their airspace. Um, and we are waiting a reply from them as to whether we can use Kazakhstan as a staging point. Well, and until and unless they confirm that, I would be in, in a position to say more. So what about the asset that we're asking about? What asset can you Can you just wait? Please, hold on. Okay, last question from the gentleman there, please. Siva, just uh, hold for the mic, please, Siva. Minister Siva from Reuters. Uh, two questions. There was a report that the pilot made a phone call from the cockpit just before the flight. Uh, that report came out overnight. Could somebody comment on what that phone call was if you have any evidence of that and you provide some details? The second thing is you keep talking about wanting to narrow the search corridor, but you clearly have not been able to do that so far. So could you be a bit more specific about some of the challenges that you're facing in narrowing those search corridors? What more can Malaysia do? What more can your partners do to help narrow the search corridors? Well, honestly, the search now has taken a global perspective. I don't think there's any bigger search and rescue operation being done right now. Um, to have the US, uh, the Chinese, uh, the Japanese uh, all working together uh, with all the sophisticated equipment in Malaysia is only just a coordinating uh, um, country because it would be impossible uh, to have such sophisticated equipment within uh, our uh, armory. But uh, the fact that uh, their support has been overwhelming, um, that is what I meant. But with the most sophisticated equipment out there in the world, and we, can, if we as a global uh, community, cannot narrow it. I don't know who else can. So basically, now you've got the Poseidon, you've got the, the P3, satellite images that focus in some area. That is what I meant by, op on the operational side, the narrowing uh, of, of the corridor, especially the southern corridor, as you can see, raises its own challenges and the depth of the sea, the weather and the waves. If we do not find it within the 30 days, it brings in other issues of how to locate, as the French airline had to take two years to find, and that comes into um, a different realm of search and rescue. I want to ask the first question, the first question. The phone call, I think uh, you have to answer. Well, um, as far as we're concerned, we, we are passing this information to the investigating authorities, and uh, they will investigate this. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, see you tomorrow. Thank you. Okay, then we conclude the session for today until we meet again tomorrow. Thank you very much.